In this video, we're going to do an example of taking a problem description, as you see on your screen in front of you, and break it down into some logical steps using pseudocode, and then take those high-level steps and break them down into more detailed steps, and then from those detailed steps, get right to the actual program. All right, so this should help you solve problems without worrying about the syntax until the last step. That's what the pseudocode is there for, to help you show the order things got to happen and break the problem down in pieces for you. All right, so let's get started on that. This is a simple program. It's going to calculate the total amount of a purchase of four items that you see listed here. Um, sales tax is 7%. And we're going to use variables throughout the program. The output of this is the, at the end, obviously, the total amount. But we're going to get the subtotal first and the sales tax amount and display those items. So a couple calculations, a couple of variables we're going to use, and so forth. All right, so let's get started. Let's break this apart. So we have this sales tax there. Um, I'm going to declare it. Doesn't have to be, but as a <coughs> excuse me, as a uh, global variable constant. As a global variable or constant. All right of 7%. Right. We don't put all our variables into global space. Right. We leave only our constants up there. Right. That's a good programming practice. Bad one to put it uh, all the variables up there. All right. Next thing we know we had those four items so we need four variables for that. So four variables for the prices. Uh, what else we're going to need? Since we're talking about variables, right, there's three calculations we got to make. So we need to declare uh, a variable for the subtotal, one of the calculations we need to do, and then another variable for the sales tax. We need to calculate that also and display it. So we need to store it in a variable. And then the final thing, we need a variable for the total um, amount right, of the purchase. Alright, so that's kind of our input portion. Right? Programs have inputs, calculations, and then output. So that's what we're going to count as our input portion. Now let's move on to the calculations. One thing we need to calculate, the first thing, is the subtotal. Can't get the final total without the subtotal. So we need to do that. We also need to calculate the sales tax before we can do the total amount also. With those two pieces of data, now we can calculate the total uh, amount of the purchase. Right, so we got our inputs calculations. No other calculations needed. The last thing we need to start doing is displaying the output. And the first thing they want us to display is a list of prices for the four items. And then we're going to display the subtotal amount. And then we're going to display the sales tax. And then finally, we're going to display the total amount. Right? And the way I write these is the order I should code them in. That's why we write it in this fashion. Right? That's what the purpose is. This is how we're going to break our logic up and create our code. So we got all the facts out of the description. So we don't really don't need that anymore. So now we're going to start adding details, which is going to get us closer to the code level. Uh, for this problem, it doesn't take very long to get there. So this statement, what does it mean? And I'm going to indent to show that what I'm typing now will be defining what it means to declare sales tax amount as a global. So I'm going to have a constant in our code. And we're going to call it, right, it's, a, it's a constant, so all constants should be in uppercase letters with an underscore between the words. And we're going to set that variable to 0.07. All right, so we got already code being defined here. We got sales tax, which is a variable. Here we need four variables. So we're going to declare item one, which is a variable now for us, uh, as a double also. All right, and set two. This is the 10.95 value. Uh, all right, so these next couple statements are defining what this means. We need to declare four variables, it says. So that's what we're going to do. Oops, that's one too many. 
Oops, no, that's the problem with cut and paste sometimes. Alright. Get my mouse to behave a little here. Alright. So this is going to be item 2, item 3, and item 4. So we got five variables already defined now. Alright, this is going to be 8. Uh, 45. This one's going to be 15, 34. And this is going to be 425. Alright, so we're getting code starting to sh form here slowly. Alright, but we're not worrying about syntax. Alright, another variable we need to declare here. I'm going to call it subtotal. Another coding standard there is that the variables start with lowercase, and all the other words in the variable names start with uppercase. Dealing with currency, so it needs to be a double, or it could be a float. And the other two here, this one we're going to call sales tax with a capital T as a double also. And our third variable here that we need for the calculations is just going to simply call it total, and that's also a double. Again, code starting to form. We got variables and values already set. And then what does it mean to calculate the subtotal? Well, subtotal, our variable, needs to equal the item 1 variable plus the item 2 variable plus the item 3 plus the item 4. Alright, so there we actually have a C++ statement there. Right, which we can cut and paste and put into our code as we'll see shortly. Then we need to calculate the sales tax. And that is simply the subtotal variable times our constant variable, which is all in tax, sales tax, I mean all in uppercase. And we use uppercase because it makes it stand out in the code that it is a constant. That's why we do it. And then the total is simply the subtotal plus the sales tax. Right, how much tax you're paying on that purchase. Again, code is forming quickly here. Next part is the output. We had our inputs, calculations, now our outputs. So here we're going to see out, and we'll actually put the statement where we want to put there, which is the price for item 1 is. I don't want the variable name there. Putting a space after the is so the price doesn't. Um, actually, we, we, don't, we need a dollar sign in there, is what we really want, because it is currency and see out the variable item 1. All right. and these four statements are pretty much the same. So again, save a little time here. All right. uh, this will be item 3 eventually. And this is going to be item 4. This one's going to be item 2. Right. For the most part, these statements are all the same. Nothing to change really, except these numbers. All right. So now we're using our variables to do our outputs. Now we just got to display our subtotal, which is the C out, the statement we want to show, which is going to be your subtotal is with a dollar sign, also, and we need to then C out the variable subtotal. Alright, again code is starting to form here. Not worrying so much about the syntax. Right? If you didn't use the C out statement, this would be even more generic to use in any programming language at that point. If you write the pseudocode the right way, right, uh, as generic as you can, then it really can apply to any language. Alright, so there's our statement for that. And the variable here, this is the sales tax. Right. And then the final output that we need is for the total dollar sign. And we output the variable. Total. Alright, so again, we start with this generic description up here, pulled out facts, then took those facts and made them um, 
more detailed into them, almost getting down to the pseudo to the code level. So now we should be able to move pretty quickly into our code here. These first couple statements, all your programs are going to have to start with. Right? These are including a library that the C++ language provides. Okay, we'll talk in more detail as we go along what those two pieces mean there, but allows us basically to do the C in and the C out of the programs. Right, mean it's going to return zero for us. Again, we'll as we go along through this weeks, you'll learn what each of these pieces mean. All right, so the first thing that we had on the list was define that constant for sales tax. All right, and we set a constant global, so the constant global goes up here. Outside of main, uh, it's going to be a double. We're going to call it again all in caps sales tax. This has to be initialized right here to a value. All right, and then we need to define our variables was the next thing. First variables we talked about were the four items, setting them to their values. All right, that's the first one. Item two then is going to equal the eight point four five. And then item three is going to equal the fifteen point three four. Right, and I'm putting commas after these because it's forming a list of variables. It's one way to declare variables. And this last one is 4.25. Right, I'm going to end that list and start individual variables just to show you the difference between the two different ways of doing it. So subtotal, uh, well, also we had sales tax that we had to calculate, and the last calculation was the total. Right, they don't need to be initialized to anything. You could initialize them to zeros. Right, in this case, it's not going to matter. So we got our variables. Right all following what we're doing up here. The next thing was this statement here. I can copy and paste that as is, put a semicolon at the end of it, and that statement is completed. All right. The nice thing about the pseudocode, you already have some of the code written out pretty close to what it needs to be, maybe a sl few slight alterations to it, but nothing too major. All right, and the last calculation Is this right here? All right. Then it's simply a matter of doing our C out statements. Again, since I wrote the statement as to how I want it to appear, I documented my code as to what I want it to look like. I can simply cut and paste it in and put the item one the item variable there. These four statements are going to be identical. Except for the changing of this. Alright, so we got our four items already out there. And you can see I'm moving through the program real quickly because it's all based on my pseudocode. I thought the process out. Right. And the next set of outputs, first thing is the subtotal. Again, I had that statement there. I don't have to think about it. I'm copying and pasting those items down into here. All right, and I'm going to do the other two the same way. All right, back and forth here. This is the sales tax. Again, I am using 2012. If you're using 2010, some of the features you're seeing me using are now available to you just means you got to type a little bit more in terms of it giving you a list of items to finish off. Right? Like here, if, if I uh, this is total, if I start typing total, you see it eventually appears in the list. I double click it, it fills it in for me. All right, and there's our program. It's ready to go, ready to run, all fully documented. Let's compile it and run it. If you get this window, just say yes to it. Just want to make sure you really want to build it. And in a second, oh, look, one bad thing I didn't do, I didn't put any uh, return lines in the output there. So let's do that right now. All right, I'm missing these in all my statements. All right. Clean up the 
clean that up. All right, run it again there, just so you can see the output as it should be. There we go, it looks much better. All right, and you can see that the values here kind of go too many decimal places. Next chapter or so, we'll show you how to format that properly to look proper. All right, but there you go. From description to pseudocode to code. All under about 15 minutes. All right. Granted, I know the stuff, so a little quicker and easier for me, but this will definitely help you break up and get that train of thought into your head before you're actually trying to do the syntax. You can bind the syntax and the breaking down the problem. It may slow you down, actually, as opposed to doing it this way.